video we'll continue on with creating an article in LaTeX. We left off having done some sections and page numbering and special characters among some other things. We'll start here with talking about LaTeX environments. LaTeX offers several different environments each of which gives LaTeX specific formatting instructions. We've actually used some of them already. When we typed begin document up here and end document here, we actually used the document environment. Or in this case, when we typed begin abstract here and end abstract here, we use the abstract environment. So anytime you type begin and then something, put in some text and then end in that same name, you're using a LaTeX environment. Another useful environment is the itemize environment. If I type begin itemize and end itemize, I've got the environment to create a bulleted list. Now to actually create the bullets, type backslash item and type the text that you want on that bullet point. So here is an example where I've got three bullet points. I'm going to click compile. And what we see is a bulleted list. You can also nest the itemized environment. So for example, let's say I wanted some sub items underneath this second bullet point. I can type the itemized environment again. and create a sub item. And you can see that appears here. Now you can change the actual look of the bullet with the optional square brackets next to the item command. So for example, if in square brackets I typed dollar sign backslash circ and another dollar sign, this produces an open circle as the bullet. Now it's a good idea to type the begin command and then the end command first and then fill in after you've done that. It's very easy to type begin itemize or begin any environment name, start typing and then forget to type the end command and that's going to cause a lot of different errors with LaTeX and it may not produce your PDF so just be sure to get in the habit of typing the begin command first then the end command immediately after that and then fill in the text that goes inside that environment. An environment that's similar to itemize is enumerate. So I'm going to type begin enumerate and then following my own advice I'm going to type end enumerate and it works just like itemize. The difference is, instead of bullet points, it creates a numbered list. Here we have it numbering from 1 to 3. Now let's talk about changing the font in LaTeX. We'll talk about a couple of different things. We'll talk about font family, font type, and font size. 
First, let's talk about font family. If you navigate to this web page, the LaTeX font catalog, you can look at a lot of different fonts that are available for LaTeX. And so there are some categories here. You can click on one of those. And the page gives you examples of lots of different fonts, what they look like. When you find one that you like, click on the name, and you can see some more examples of it. And even more importantly, you can see this section called Usage. This gives you a LaTeX command to include in the preamble of your document to get that particular font. Now, one thing I should point out is that not every single font here is necessarily going to work. And that's because the font has to be available in uh, the PDF that you have. And there are some fonts that are proprietary, they cost money to use, and so because they're not free, um, your PDF viewer may not have them. But for most fonts, you can copy this text, put it into the preamble, and you'll have that font. The example that I'm going to use is just to get a simple Times New Roman font. And as it turns out, to do that, you simply just need to type use package times, and that'll produce Times New Roman. So I'm going to compile that. And as you can see, now I have a Times New Roman font, which looks pretty similar to what you might get out of Microsoft Word, for example. So I encourage you to explore this website, the LaTeX Font Catalog, to look for different fonts that you are interested in using. Okay, next up, let's talk about font type. There are several different font types available. Some of the most common are italics. So if you type backslash text IT, and then some text inside curly braces, you'll get text in italics. There's also slanted text, which looks similar to italics, but is a little bit different. That's text SL. You can also type in small capitals. That's text SC. And so that makes capital letters, like this T right here, a little bit larger than the lowercase letters, but all the lowercase letters are in the shape of uh, capital letters. If you type text BF, you'll get bold text. Text SF. We'll get sans serif text. And then there's text TT. Which is monospace text, or think about it as text that looks like it was produced by a typewriter. So I'm going to go ahead and compile that. And here is the result. Italics slanted text, here's the small caps, bold text, sans serif text right here, and then the last one, typewriter or monospace text. Now let's talk about font size. Font size works a little bit differently in LaTeX than in programs like Microsoft Word. The font size commands that we're going to use depend on what the default font is or, or what font you've set for the document as a whole. You may remember in our very first line document class, in square brackets we can put this optional argument for 12 point font. That makes 12 point the default font in our, in our document. If you don't specify anything here you get 10 point font. Uh, but we've got 12 point and so that sets what's called the normal size text for our document. 
Now, as you might imagine, you can make text that is incrementally bigger or incrementally smaller than normal size. So for example, I'm going to type the text, this is small. And if I put the command small around that, Add in some normal size so we can compare. You can see that this text is just a little bit smaller than this one. If we want to go even smaller than that, we can go down to footnote size. Or script size or the smallest one in the default set of commands is called tiny and so you can see right here Here's our small text, this is the normal size text, and then we get smaller on down from footnote size to script size to tiny. Okay, now what if we want it to go the other way? One down from normal size was small, one up from normal size is backslash large in all lowercase. You can also do backslash large but with a capital L that is a little bit larger then you can do backslash large in all capitals you can do backslash huge in all lower cases and finally backslash huge with uppercase H So here's the result. Large right here is a little bit bigger than normal size. Large with a capital L is bigger than that. Large with all uppercase L, A, R, G, E is bigger than that. Huge in all lower cases is a little bit bigger. And then finally the largest that we have in the default settings is huge with a capital H. One last thing I should mention is that doing the font size in this way sometimes can create some problems in trying to go back to normal size. So one way to overcome this problem is to use the commands just a little bit differently. And this is what I recommend using on a, on a general basis. Instead of typing backslash and then the name of the font size you want, such as footnote size and then the curly braces, I recommend doing it this way. Put the text that you want at the particular size in curly braces and then just put backslash footnote size or whatever size you want inside the curly braces like I have here. And the result is just that text in footnote size and typing as normal goes back to the normal size font. Okay, so that's all we have for this video. In the next video, we'll continue on with tips and tricks for creating an article. We'll start with footnotes and endnotes and move to spacing and block quotes and the use of floats, among some other things.